Playing of the National Anthem. Welcome back here to Memorial Stadium, ladies and gentlemen. Jacob Barker here along with Matt Cole at CBJake2 at MCDJMC. Matt, how are you doing? Beautiful day for lacrosse, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful day. Just came from a comp service event for the spring plunge. I'm excited to be here to watch some lacrosse. And to start things off for the, for the starting lineups for the John Carroll Blue Streaks, Matt Cole. Uh, so we've got at defense number two, Jack McLean, the sophomore from Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. Uh, also at defense number 17, Kevin Werner and Tommy Adolph, uh, number 19. At attack, we have number three, Stephen Liu, uh, Stephen Liu, excuse me, uh, the freshman from Buffalo, New York. Also, we have Michael Roth from Clarence, New York, number 21, and number 22, Declan O'Grady from Mason, Ohio. At midi, we have Kyle Patterson, number 23, the freshman from Tondawanda, New York. We have Patrick Carney, the sophomore from Berkeley Heights, New Jersey, and Jackson Twomey, the freshman from Rochester, New York, and in goal for the John Carroll Blue Streaks today, uh, number six, Brian Bettle out of Syracuse, New York. So for the Otterbein Cardinals, hand it over to you, Jacob. A uh, at, uh, freshman goalie, number one, James Gunling, a senior midi, number three, Jeff Reese, senior attack, number four, Mikey O'Neill, sophomore attack, number nine, Robbie Giuliano, junior defender, number 11, Brogan Orcutt, Junior midi, number 15, Brandon Stroop. A senior attack, number 16, Mike Dadalo. A sophomore midi, number 19, Marcus Willis. Uh, ju uh, junior defender, number 33, Trevor Kajowski. And the sophomore defender, number 35, Adam Norris. As the two teams get set ready to take the field, this is the first ever interconference, uh, interconference matchup in the Ohio Athletic Conference between these two teams. Again, as we said, this is the first year of the Ohio Athletic, of having a full-fledged Ohio Athletic Conference. And these two teams will look to battle it out here. One thing of note, John Carroll University, nine and one, but despite their record, they're the best team that they have played is the College of Worcester, which they lost to uh, nine to uh, set eight to seven in overtime. Now keep in mind the Cardinals actually took down the College of Wooster eight to six last week. So that is something. Or uh, I'm sorry, prior it was at uh, about two weeks ago they took down that team. So that is some up note here for the Cardinals. Set for the face off, and we are just about underway as the two teams get ready to take the field. Battling out for the face off. That's Kyle Patterson. But he gets beaten there by the Cardinals. On the attack the other way, O'Neal. He'll look to play it down low. Quick shot, scores! Number 16, Mike Dadalo. Who else? On the pass from Mikey O'Neal. And, and that is just eight seconds into the game. That didn't take long. And the Cardinals take an early one to nothing lead. Mike Dadalo adding to his team leading uh, 17th goal of the season. Mikey O'Neill, his 23rd assists. And the Cardinals jump on the scoreboard early. 
Salazar trying to fight for that faceoff, and he's got it, and he'll hand it off to Drew Watson. Watson, he'll wander, wander back a little bit, slips and falls, but he'll get right back up and hand it back to Gunling. Cardinals changing up on the fly. Reese back out there on the field along with Willis. Gunling taking his time, creeping out slowly, nowhere to go with it. He'll look to hand it off. Streaking right down, right down the middle, that's Willis. Willis on the right wing. He'll charge to the net, and the Cardinals will look to set it up in the cycle. Behind the net, that's Giuliano. He'll hand it off to O'Neill. O'Neill now at the point for Willis. Willis has got room to shoot it, but he'll move it over. Reese back to Willis. Willis trying to take it to the net, but can't as the Blue Streaks box out in front of the net. Lots of traffic in front of Brian Bettle. As the Cardinals try to play it out in front, and there's another goal for the Cardinals. And this one looks like it's going to go to Robbie Giuliano. Giuliano, again, having a breakout season. That's his 15th goal of the season. And the Cardinals up 2-0 just a minute and fifth. Just a minute and 10 seconds into the game. And Matt, looks like we're going to be in for a little bit of a, more of a seesaw fair than we thought. Yeah, well, it's going to go into a scoring battle today as opposed to what we saw last weekend here when it was a very slow start. Not a lot of scoring for either team. It looks like the Cardinals are coming out on this one early. Uh, one thing to point out, though, is how slippery the field is. We have players falling on both sides. Um, and it looks just a little bit more slippery down there on the JCU defense. Meanwhile, charging back again is Salazar. Cardinals have maintained solid possession of this game as the Cardinals change up. Reese back out there on the field along with Willis. Mikey O'Neill, he's got speed, he's got time. He'll try to take it to the net and does. He's got room. What's he going to do with it? He'll take it back behind the net for Dadalo. Dadalo, he'll play it up top for Reese. At the point now, Willis. Willis takes his time with it. Nowhere to go with it. He'll take a look. He'll hand it over to, I believe that's Willis again, or that's Dadalo, excuse me. Back to Willis. Reese, now he'll look at the point. He's got room to shoot. He'll wind and fire. Save made by Bettle. Point blank save there by Brian Bettle, and the Blue Streaks will come away with it. That's Werner with it. Warner, he'll play it across to his counterpart. That's Hannon. He'll take his time with it as Jaska, Brian Jaska comes back out onto the on the field as a midi. Meanwhile, the Blue Streaks will look to break it out the other way and set up an attack of their own. They try to work it around the perimeter now. That's Leos. Leos, the team leader in goals. He's got 33 total points on the season. He's got 31 goals and two assists. Cardinals have to watch him. Now that's Jazga. Jazga with it. He'll he'll dowsy it. Take his time with it. Pressured heavily there by Titus. Flinner with it. He'll take it to the net, but he's hauled down immediately and looks like we're going to get a deliberate penalty called there. Delayed penalty coming up here on the Cardinals. Cardinals defense looks significantly more aggressive than we've seen them in the last couple weeks. Meanwhile, but there's another there's a score for the Blue Streaks on the delayed penalty. And that's Keegan Flinner. Flinner on the season. That's his 17th goal of the year. 17 goals and four assists. John Kell right back in this game. The two-goal lead is a dangerous one. Uh, and it's especially dangerous in lacrosse, such a high-scoring game. After you get up by more than one, you start to feel a little bit more comfortable than you should. And it can really come back to bite you. Salazar set for the faceoff. He'll take it. And he wins it yet again. Salazar, recently named OAC Player of the Week. JCU putting David Whipkey, the uh, freshman defenseman, out there for the faceoff. Uh, rather unorthodox move, but obviously trying to shut down this dominating uh, Otterbein faceoff possession team. No, Vicky, he's got speed. Defenseman all the way across midfield. He'll hand it over to O'Neill, and he'll cross over to Tyner. Tyner on the right wing, far side. He'll look to charge there against Blake. Tyner, he'll hand it back to Reese now. Reese now takes a look. 
Lots of traffic in front of Bettel. As Dadalo waits in front of that net. O'Neill now. He'll try to take it to the net. He's got speed. He's going to look to hand it off, but can't. Instead, he's going to wrap her around. Over to, over to Dadalo, near, near side on the left wing. He'll try to take it to the net. But coming back onto the field, that's Brandon Stroop. As Dadalo takes the, takes the front of the net, Stroop hands it off. Stroop will take it at the point. Tyner with it. Pressured heavily there by Blake. Tyner now to the net. Shot. Tough angle there. Meanwhile, there's an, in front of the net, and that's turned aside by Bettle. Huge save on Mike Dadalo. Ball still in play as Dadalo gives chase for it. He tries to maintain possession. Little spin move there on his counterpart. That's Carney. Looked like a missed call there with a uh, bit of a check to the face there of Dadalo. Cardinals applying constant pressure, killing that clock as O'Neill loses possession of it behind the net. Bettle will pick it up in transition for the Blue Streaks. Bettle, he'll hand it off to Adolf. Adolf. Near side on the right wing. He'll hand it over now far side. Slow break out here by the Blue Streaks. 9.35 in counting left in the first quarter. Cardinals still on top. 2-1 to one on goals by Robbie Giuliano and Mike Dadalo. Charging through the zone. And loss of possession as Colin Hartnett trying to get his guys off on a change. As no Vicky will take as no Vicky comes no Vicky, no Vicky takes on uh, comes back onto the sideline. Willis and Clippa back on the field. Cardinals in the counter attack the other way. He'll hand it off to Clippa. Clippa now for Connor Bach. Bach, high slot, he'll hand it behind the net. Cardinals wrote. Cardinals trying to cycle it out in front. Nobody trying to take the net, but as soon as I say that, that might, uh, Robbie Giuliano is there. Bach with Giuliano standing in front of the net. Cardinals got to try and get it to the front. Clippa now, he'll take a shot, and that's turned aside by Bettle. Bettle with a couple huge saves here, and it's led to a couple transition plays by the Blue Streaks. Meantime, with speed, it's Sprake. Sprake now tries to get through traffic. Nobody there, though, and Bach will come away with it with speed. Cardinals in transition the other way. That's actually Orcutt. Orcutt, the defenseman, coming up on the play. He'll hand it off for O'Neill. Quick transition game for the Cardinals, and they look to kill more time off this clock. Try to make it a 3-1 to one game. O'Neill just creeping, star-stepping behind that net slowly. He'll pick up speed with it now on the wraparound. Throws it out in front. Save made by Bettle. How is Mike Dadalo creeping the front of the net yet again? And now it's Giuliano. Hands it over to O'Neill. He'll try to get a shot away and battle again. Coming up huge here in these mid stages of the first quarter. Giuliano looking to make something happen with it. He'll try to bring it around the net. Clippa now, near side on the left wing. He'll hand it over to Willis. Willis takes his time with it. High slot defended tightly there by Tuomi. Tuomi trying to apply pressure, and he does, and it works. Blue Streaks transition the other way. Adolph, though, pressured there on the forecheck by O'Neill, struggling to get that one away. He finally does, and the Blue Streaks will change on the fly. Coming back onto the field is Keegan Flinner. Flinner looks for that pass on the right wing, but he's not going to get it from Jaska. Jaska doesn't see him. He'll try to bring it in on the near side. Jaska behind the net, and the Blue Streaks will set it up near the point now. Right point, O'Grady. Delkin O'Grady, one of the other point leaders on this team. He's got 25 goals and eight assists coming to today. O'Grady, a little shimmy shake there, trying to get to the slot. Gets a shot away at Gunling, and he sticks that one aside. Huge save there by James Gunling, Matt. Guy, a guy that you know the Cardinals really look to after losing Adam Hatchard. 
he's really stepped up big. Yeah, he really has. Uh, all three goaltenders on the Otterbein roster, freshmen, and uh, Gundling becoming, has become the starter for this team and has really backed it up. He has become an incredibly strong goaltender and one that I'm sure is going to have a long and helpful career here at Otterbein. Watson applying heavy pressure there on O'Grady. It works. And we're waiting to call from the officials, but it looks like it's going to be possession to John Carroll. Timeout called here by Colin Hartnett. High score, um, somewhat high scoring affair thus far. Lots of scoring opportunities for the Cardinals. Dadalo, he getting, he's getting some chances. He's got one goal on the afternoon so far, but a lot of huge saves by uh, Brian Bettelmatt. Yeah, and uh, twice now we've seen a little bit of a little bit of extra play there after the whistle from Keegan Flinter, the midi uh, for John Carroll, as well as Delkin O'Grady, both going after Drew Watson from Otterbein. Uh, a little bit of pushing and shoving. Now Keegan Flinter is actually someone who I played against in high school. He's from Pittsburgh, plays for Upper Saint Clair, um, and uh, he uh, is looking like quite a bit of a hothead. So meanwhile, we look at the po uh, point out some of the first ever OAC um, lax games here this season. Again, this is the first season of OAC of OAC conference play. Today being the first one for Otterbein, and meanwhile also matching up Mount Union and Capital and Baldwin Wallace and Wilmington. All games today are at one o'clock. We will keep you updated on those scores throughout the afternoon. Cardinals up two to one with 6:09 left here in the first quarter. Blue Streaks break out after the timeout called. First year head coach Brian Small. As we said, the first year of this program for this Blue Streaks team has done a phenomenal job so far. Nine and one on the season, despite no conference games. Colin Hartnett, his fifth season, led the Cardinals to their first ever NCAA tournament appearance last season. Ended up falling to Adrian College, but they're looking to build on that here. Taking advantage of this uh, first, of this uh, inaugural conference OAC conference season wind is really picking up here out at uh, Memorial Stadium something that could come into play here in the later quarters of the game when the shots get just a little bit weaker as players get tired the wind could blow the ball around just a little bit Jazz get trying to rotate it around at the point now it's Kincaid Kincaid on the right wing at the point now high slot using his speed as a kneel Native of Louisville, Ohio, a, a freshman. One thing of note here is that this roster for the Blue Streaks not nearly as large as the Cardinals. 11 fewer players. As you talk about fatigue, Matt, that's certainly going to be a factor for this team later on. I'm sure it will be. That was something we talked about uh, last Saturday as well, um, playing St. Vincent, that uh, Otterbein just has a huge, huge roster. And it's almost double the size of any other team that you're going to see them play against. So uh, with all these guys dressing, even if some of them never get playing time, uh, if someone is to get hurt or if people get tired, Otterbein has the numbers to hold back. But there's a goal to tie the game, and that's Delkin O'Grady. Second, second on the team in goals, and that's his 26th of the season. The Blue Streaks tie the game here at two. Again, from the high slot. Blue Streaks were working on that all shit, this entire shift. As Salazar ready to take the face off yet again. Game tied at two with just under five minutes remaining. As the Cardinals will pick it up in transition, that's Titus now. Reese now, he's got room to take it to the high slot, trying to get around that defender and does. Not enough room though to shoot. He'll hesitate just a little bit and hand it, look to hand it off to Marcus Willis. He's got Willis on the near side at the, at the left point. Can't get it there though. A little shimmy shake trying to get this John Carroll defense off cue. Willis, he's got time with it, he'll hand it over. Now Willis again. Near side behind the net, O'Neal for Giuliano. Giuliano, nice spin move on, nice spin move on the defender there, trying to get it out in front of the net. Heavy pressure though coming from Adolph. Shot there, turned aside by, shot there by Giuliano. That's turned aside by Bettle. Continuous pressure for it though. Good forecheck by the Cardinals, but they're going to give possession to the Blue Streaks. 
win really picking up as Matt said earlier let's see how that becomes a factor John Carroll trying to take their time with it as coming onto the field is Andy Hufford midfielder out of Fairborn Ohio the senior also the lead also the com seeds community garden leader on this team he was given one of the community service awards last night at the Cardi Espies Flincher now. He'll try to hand it off in transition. A little bit of a rotation going on here. Coming into the play is Kincaid. Kincaid, look out. He's got speed to the net. Turned aside by Gunling. Huge save. And that one is thrown out of play. What a stop there by the freshman James Gunling. 12, a record 12 saves he had against Albion College. And we're... And Steve, we and it looks like we got a delayed penalty coming up here on the Cardinals. Colin Hartnett, he wants an explanation for the call, and we'll wait the call from the official. Now Daniel Kincaid, another player, uh, one of three players who is from uh, Upper St. Clair High School in Pittsburgh, a school that I know personally has a very strong program, as some of the schools do here in the local Westerville area. Uh, I know Worthington Kilborn with a very strong program. Uh, that is where James Gundling is from, but. It's interesting to see some of these players. You can really see the style that their high school played coming through, uh, especially some of these freshmen struggle to adapt to a whole new style of a brand new team in the collegiate level. Blue Streaks with two unanswered goals. They're looking to make it three. That's Ariel. Ariel with it. He'll hand it off right near side to O'Grady. O'Grady looking to get to that front of the net. He tries to pinch in a little bit, but he'll stay on the perimeter. Morgan now near side, it's O'Grady. Quick passing here by the Blue Streaks. They look to get it to the front of the net. Center down in front, shot scores. Michael Roth, the third, third un, three unanswered goals for the Blue Streaks, and they now have the lead. 21, Michael Roth on the open Blue Streaks. This is by Brian Gaskin. This is not something that Otterbein can let happen. Uh, you don't want to let any team run away with a game, especially not John Carroll. Uh, sitting at 9-1, and one, even if the teams they played have not been quite as strong as Otterbein, uh, letting any team go unanswered on you and start to run up the score is something that's really hard to dig out of in a game like lacrosse. Salazar, though, he wins the faceoff, tries to scoop up the ground ball, takedown from behind. And we got a delayed call coming up here against the Blue Streaks. Possession, automatic possession to the Cardinals. O'Neill will scoop it up. as he's got it far side on the right wing. O'Neill creeps to the front of the net, tries to get there and does. Nice work there by O'Neill. He'll try to get in behind the net. Okay. Some complaints here from, so we got, and uh, Matt, you mentioned the officiating in this game. We got some amateur officials down in the crowd looking for, looking for some calls as well. Not too happy with the way this game is being called. But Bach, he'll take it now inside the slot. Tries to take it there himself, and it's turned aside by Bettel. Another huge stop. And Brian Bettel coming up huge yet again. Bettel uh, sure seems very unshaken by those two early goals. Uh, it's a little bit surprising. He's really managed to shake off those two hard ones there in the beginning. Good for John Carroll. Not so great for Otterbein at this moment. Battle with six saves so far on the afternoon. As the blue streaks in transition the other way. We're going to get a whistle blown. Looks like we got an offside call against the blue streaks. And now Willis will hand it off in tr fast transition. O'Neill. Ball goes out of bounds. He was not there in time. One minute remaining. And the That's last minute, minute of the first quarter. Battle, he'll scoop it up. Pressured there by Daddle. None the worse for weather. He'll get it out of, out of the arm's way. As they'll try to bring it in. And now they got numbers. Blue streaks, he'll try to take it in. Three on two the other way. No rotated in and out. The last minute here of the first quarter. 
30 seconds left, and that's Dakota Thomas. Thomas trying to wait to get the last shot away for this Blue Streaks team, and he'll hand it off to his counterpart. That's Roth. Roth, he'll rotate it behind the net now. And that's Kincaid again. Kincaid try to creep, try to creep to the front of that net. He's got McLean there with him, trying to dish it off. Less than 10 seconds left. Clock down to five, four, three, two, and one. And that'll mark the end of the first quarter here at Memorial Stadium. Blue streaks on top, three to two. Your thoughts, Matt? Uh, there's a lot of play after the whistle. That's my biggest thought. And a lot of it comes from John Carroll. They're really sparking a lot of, a lot of extra effort. Uh, they're you know throwing some pushes, throwing some shoves, all sorts of things going on. And you know that's not something that you can let get to you. And it seems like John Carroll has gotten just a bit inside of Ottermine's head, and you don't want to let that happen, especially when you're down one goal after the first period, first quarter. Excuse me. Some some stats here for you at the end of the first. Otterbein with nine shots on goal to John Carroll six, but nonetheless John Carroll has the lead three to two. And uh, say he's got six. They got six saves. He's got six saves. Does Brian Bettle? Uh, ground balls four. John uh, John Carroll has four. Otterbein has three. Otterbein six for six in the faceoff department, and that leads us to our OAC Player of the Week in Carlos Salazar. Salazar won 12 of his 17 face-offs against Wooster, allowing Otterbein to retain possession throughout and escape with that 8-6 win. And he went a near-perfect last Saturday, 12 of 13, and collecting seven of ground balls. And his performance helped the team outshoot St. Vincent 41-20 and complete a come-from-behind win. And um, as, they ho as, uh, as the team is hosting John Carroll today, but a huge presence on this team, face-off specialist from Wooster, Ohio, a huge congratulations to him as the Cardinals will look to break out here end of the first quarter and we get ready to start the second I think Matt you're mentioning a lot of extra play at the end keys uh, you know and with that extra play by John Carroll you know how does Otter you know what's Ottermine's key to you know really stay composed uh, you know, do, do you kind of counter with it or do you go against it uh, you really just want to avoid it um, you know, if you know it's coming, obviously you can't stop JCU from pushing you around, but you really don't want to retaliate because uh, the guy to punch second is the one that gets called, and that goes just as much for lacrosse as it does for every sport. Um, so even if they're the ones being the instigator, you don't want to get called for the unsportsmanlike, and you don't want to get called for the stuff after the whistle because that can really ruin your momentum just as bad as letting them get inside your head. So really you just want to, uh, defer it as much as possible. Watson brings it in with speed, slips and falls nearly the same spot he fell back in the first quarter as the Cardinals will work it behind the net. That's Tyner. Cardinals changing their lineup a little bit. And excuse me, that's uh, Mike Sullivan behind the net. Sullivan, the native of Detroit, Michigan and Detroit Catholic Central High School. One of many Michigan natives on this team, Jeff Dunichek, Adam Kolovar, Connor Bach, just to name a few. I know, Matt, you played lacrosse in high school in Michigan. Seems to be a real hot spot for it, despite being being big for hockey. Meantime, there, there's a shot by Dadalo turned aside by Bettel. That's one he wants back. All right, since we're working with two cameras, I'm gonna... O'Neal, he'll try to work it behind the net slowly. Nobody within distance, so he'll take it to the net himself. Tries to bring it out in front. Nice spin move there. Shot save made by Bettle. Rebound, rebound fought for by the Cardinals. And Stroop will pick it up. Stroop now. He'll try to take a shot. He scores. Brandon Stroop. Not giving up on the play. And the Cardinals tie the game. Just a quick look around the OAC. Baldwin Wallace currently leads Wilmington 5-1. to 10-19 left in the second there. Great work there by the Cardinals to get in front of that net. Brandon Stroop never giving up on the play. He picks up the loose ball and ties the game for the Cardinals. Stroop, that's his fifth goal of the season and fifth point and 18th shot of the year as well. So early in the second quarter, the Cardinals tie the game. Heavy pressure on Bettel. And persistence finally pays off in front of that net. Blue Streaks, meanwhile, though, they look to counter the other way. And that's Kincaid again. <laughs> 
Flinter. Trying to work to the high slot, taking his time with it. No, no, none the worse for wear. A little shove by Alex Titus. That shove and that physicality pays off there for the Cardinals. They get the ball, they force the turnover, and they'll counter the other way. Gunling creeping a little far out of that net. Long lead pass here on the, on the wing, and Titus will take possession of it. He'll get himself to the front of that net, and Bach will take it. Connor Bach at the left point. Nowhere to go with it. Clip has got it. He's trying to hand it off to somebody. Nowhere to go, though. He's got Willis countering off the, off the bench. It's Willis. Willis now back to Bach. Or that's Clippa, excuse me. Now back out Sullivan right Sullivan right wing. He'll try to play it behind the net. O'Neal tripped up there on the play. Automatic possession of the Cardinals. Or no, they're going to hand it to John Carroll. I don't know how that possibly happened. O'Neal, you can see the frustration there on his face. He's not happy about it. And the Blue Streaks take advantage of that the other way. And Sparky with speed, he'll bring it down far side. Behind the net, Kincaid again. Blue Streaks try, try to work the front of that net. They're looking for bodies there. That's what Kincaid's looking for. Pressure, though, coming from Willis. Kincaid tried to bring it out in front. A number of bodies there for the Cardinals. A lot of physical play picking up. And the hitting's starting to pick up a little bit. Loose, both teams trying to fight for the loose ball, but the Cardinals won't earn possession of it. Novicki now, he'll bring it in with speed. No, Vicky, the native of, junior native of Mason, Ohio, not too far from the ever-famous Kings Island. Just outside of Cincinnati, huge high school just like you came from, Matt. Nearly 3,000 students, also known for their lacrosse program. As Sullivan, he'll work it behind the net. Over to O'Neal. Sullivan looking for O'Neal, taking his time with it. 11.30 left here in the second quarter at Memorial Stadium. Game tied at three apiece. Sullivan, a little spin move, trying to get to the net, but can't. Pressure there coming from the Blue Streaks defense. O'Neal, tight angle. He's not going to take the shot. He's just going to hand it over to Reese. Now to Stroop again. Reese takes a look with it. Trying to find a little place, trying to find some room to get to that net. He'll throw it behind the net for Sullivan again. Trips and falls there. Pressure, though, coming from Car Carney. Carney continuing to apply extra pressure on the defensive side there as that shot goes way wide. That's Giuliano going way over the net. Cardinals were closest to that one, though, and they'll maintain possession of it. Sullivan now behind the net. He'll bring it near side on the wing, try to look to the point. There's nobody there for it, though. Stroop tries to move back to his position on the right point. Stroop wants it, but Sullivan will play it behind the net. He'll rotate it down in front. Shot played over the net. The Cardinals will call for it, and they get it again. Time of possession being a factor here for the Cardinals as they're trying to generate some opportunities, get some points up on the board. As they'll rotate it down in front, and Sullivan scores. Mike Sullivan, the wraparound attempt, taking it off the inbounds, and the Cardinals lead four to three with just over with just under 11 minutes remaining. Huge shot there coming around the net, uh, which is great. That's what the Cardinals need. It really appears uh, that Bendel, the goaltender, or Bettle, excuse me, the goaltender for JCU, uh, does not do well with those close, low shots. Hopefully that is something that Otterbein sees as clearly as we see up here and something that they can catch on to. Sullivan's 13th goal of the season, 18th point. Face-off violation there as that was Kyle Patterson, number 23. He was caught laying down on that one. A little bit of delay, and the Cardinals will get possession. Willis tries to work it behind the net. He'll hand it off to Sullivan. Sullivan, he'll play it on over. Far side on the left wing, that's O'Neal. To Klippa now. Klippa at the point, high slot now near midfield. He'll hand it off to Bach. Little shimmy shake there. Tries to work it out, trying to give and go, but can't. He'll hand it off to Willis. Willis with speed. He'll try and charge to the net, fire it to the net, turned aside by Bettle. 
Cardinals call for it, they get it. And O'Neal is gonna try and play it in behind the net. Over in the corner, O'Neal. Pressure there coming from Carney. O'Neal now, he'll play it in the slot. Meanwhile, tries to work it over and a shot by Dattel is turned aside. <laughs> Brian Bettle coming up huge point blank there. Tight angle though for Bettle, or uh, t sorry, tight angle there for Dattelo. He can't put it home and the Cardinals, they lose a chance to take the two goal lead and the Blue Streaks will maintain possession and the Blue Streaks will counter the other way. Trying to work it down in deep. And now across midfield. That's Blake. Blake with it. Far side on the right wing. Pressure coming from the outer bind defense. And looks like we got offsides is the call. Cardinals get possession of it. Turnover by the Blue Streaks. Long lead pass here for O'Neal. Excuse me, that's Reese on the on the wing. Reese with Giuliano. He'll hand it off to O'Neal. Juliana creeping behind that corner, and Tyner will take it. Pat Tyner finally back in the lineup. Tyner getting four goals last Saturday against St. Vincent. Huge victory for the Cardinals. A little bit of a tight one. They won that one 5-4, to four. and Tyner the man of that match. Stroop trying to take it to the front of the net. Nobody there for him. He turns it over. Great pressure there coming from Kevin Warner. Warner the junior out of Kent, Ohio. A, the same town, the um, college town of Kent, Ohio, home to Kent State University. How's the crowd looking? Oh, and he drops his stick, dropping his stick there as Flinter picks it right back up, though, before Titus is able to get to it. Next time out, we'll get that shot. It's got to be, uh, it's got to be a blooper there, Matt. You don't see somebody drop their stick too often. You're usually keeping one hand on it, but. That could have been very, very costly for the Blue Streaks. Yeah, most of the uh, players out on the field will call, call that something a yard sale. And uh, it's always quite a great bit of satisfaction when someone on the other team drops across. Delayed penalty coming up against the Cardinals, and it looks like it's going to be on Orcutt. Orcutt looks like he's going to be called for a cross check on Flinter. Taken down, though, on, the, on that side, on the far side. Huge hit there by Delkin O'Grady. But O'Grady not happy with that call. <laughs> so we await the call from the officials. And I don't know, Matt, if you can catch what the officials are doing here. Who's going to get the call? It's a little hard to tell from here. Um, I mean, obviously, the delay call was on Otterbein. Uh, we'll have to see what they call it in the live stats. Looks there. Um, like it is or cut going into the box. Uh, so we'll have to see here what they end up calling against on him. Man, Slashing, it, that's it. And it looked like a cross check, but there'll be a slash nonetheless. Man advantage for the blue streaks. They work it around the perimeter at the point now and rotating with it. Quick movement by the blue streaks. And that's Jaska with it. Over to Flinter. Flinter now to Jaska. At the point, quick movement there by Kincaid. Kincaid at the point with it. He wants it back. He's going to get it. He'll hand it over to Flinter. Flinter, but that one's intercepted by the Cardinals. They look to try and clear it, but can't. Pressure coming. A little extra physical play, but with speed. And the Cardinals will come away with a huge play there by Matt Azell, the defenseman. Gives, gives a little extra shove on the sideline. It looks like we're going to get a little bit of an altercation. Azell did not like what he got from... O'Grady, a little extra shove, and looks like he's going to take an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty for that one. It's not a penalty you can afford to take there. And this is what I was talking about. You can't let JCU get inside of your head uh, out there. The Cardinals really need to try to avoid this extra play, this after-the-whistle business. Uh, you just need to keep your head clean out there. The more you play into their game, the more it's going to tear you up, and you just can't let that happen. As Chiston White takes the field, first time we've seen him today, to replace uh, the uh, penalty penalized Matt Isley. 
Four to three Cardinals on top in the second quarter. Justin White, he, he comes back onto the field. As we mentioned, first time we've seen him all day. Native of Vinland, Vineland, New Jersey. Senior athletic training major, also member of Phi Delta Theta fraternity, and he'll take the field. Two man, two man down are the Cardinals now. Huge hole. Brian Small, the uh, first year coach for John Carroll, out on the field right now, trying to argue with the officials. Not happy with whatever call has been made so far. Uh, as it looks like there is a timeout taken. Now, whether that has, I'm not sure if that was John Carroll's timeout, Otterbein's timeout, or an official timeout, um, but the teams are coming together for a huddle as the officials discuss. Uh, and it looks like Brian Small and Colin Hartnett headed out to try and argue their case. Colin Hartnett going directly to the refs. Brian Small trying to stay back a little bit. Yeah, you got to wonder what Hartnett's going to say. But Brian Small, the one, he's the one that's getting a little vocal now, and I'd be aware of him. If you're calling Hartnett, Hartnett, very composed coach, typically very composed. And, uh, you know, it's um, it, it takes it takes something, you know, to really get him going. And the officials, they don't seem to have it together right now, Matt. You know, it's, you know, we're seeing a lot of, a lot of this extra play, frankly, should not be happening. You know, it shouldn't be happening from the start for John Carroll. And I think, you know, you're a new team. You understand that. You've, you've got to understand coming together as a group for the first time. But you have to understand the basics. And um, right now, you know, we'll see if the, we'll see if how much of a huddle, you know, how much of a dividend this little um, huddle pays by the plays uh, is. Uh, how, we'll see how much, you know, of a role this little alter, you know, conversation with the officials plays a role in the game. Hartnett trying to wave his players away, just trying to get prevent them from getting involved now. Officials discussing now with the coaches. Uh, we'll have to see which way this goes. Uh, and like you said, this after the whistle stuff isn't you know isn't something that you want to see in any game. You don't want it to be happening. But it's hard lacrosse a game with only three officials and 20 players on the field if you count the goalies for both teams. It's hard to watch everything. It's hard to see everything, especially uh, when the referee's main focus is on the ball and what the action is around the ball uh, so when this after the whistle contact comes close to the sideline away from the play it's difficult to catch everything and that's when you get uh, coaches irritated out off of the sideline onto the field just because the refs didn't see everything that they saw I think that being a ref in a sport in general you know you get you yell that for every for a hundred percent of the time, and you make calls right ninety percent of the time. So it's not an easy job for these guys, as you said, Matt. Three officials compared to twenty plus players, not an easy task. They look to settle it down. Though, let's see though how much of a dividend that you know little um, gathering by the officials plays in the game. You know whether they're going to tighten up on both teams or not. So it looks like after all of the discussion. Uh, it does appear that Brogan Orcutt is the only one still in the box. Looks like to be a it must be a coincidental minor on Isley though. You know, after that little tap by the Blue Streaks there, as again they're the ones that started it. But meantime, the other end, Cardinals with a man down, they lead the rush the other way and they'll look to set it up. Tyner, he'll take it. He'll take it himself at the left point. Tyner with it, he'll take his time. Now to Reese, Reese coming off the bench. At the point with it, high slot, looking nowhere to go with it. Pressure coming from Flinner. A very, very aggressive defense is this JCU team. Uh, the Blue Streaks really putting the pressure up no matter where the ball is on the field, uh, locking off as much as possible and just trying to out physical the Otterbein Cardinals. Out, out, you know, outsides, not necessarily outsides, but out hit this team as Sullivan. Wraparound attempt. That shot goes way over the net. O'Neill reaching for it. He'll get possession of it in the deep, in the far corner. O'Neill creeps with it behind the net, slowly walking it out. Less than five minutes left here in the half. O'Neill, little spin move, tries to get it out in front of the net. There's a shot by Sullivan. Winds and fires over the net. Sullivan had a point-blank chance to get his second goal of the game and the fifth goal for the Cardinals, but misses that one. Cardinals will look to make up for that, though, as O'Neill with it in the near corner. He'll throw it far side to Giuliano. 
Back to Sullivan. Willis waits at the point. He wants it in the high slot. Sullivan works back and forth. Tries to get a shot away. He's taken down. And going to get a foul called on the Blue Streaks. Automatic possession to the Cardinals. They'll take advantage of that one. Four to three Cardinals on top as they will try to work it around, trying to get their fifth goal. Jeffrey slowly takes his time with it. He'll work it in behind the net in the deep corner now for O'Neill. Now behind the net, Sullivan. Sullivan nowhere to go with it in the slot. Now he'll hand it off back to O'Neill again. O'Neill tries to haul it to the net and does. Delayed penalty coming up on the blue streaks. They try to send it out in front. Whistle finally blown dead. We'll await the call from the official. It's finally, we're starting to see some changes here already by these guys. Uh, looks like it's going to be a slash. I would probably call that a trip there on number 16 from JCU, Patrick Carney. Uh, but that will send him to the box for at least 30 seconds and give this Otterbein team a chance to go for the EMO. Hartnett arguing the call yet again to the official. He's going to call a timeout for the between these two teams. And, uh, Matt, you know, we're starting to see a little bit of a turnaround in this game, you know, a little bit of, you know, the officials trying to get things together a little bit more. We're not seeing as much extracurricular activity. We're seeing a little bit more smoother play. The Cardinals need to take advantage of it. Yeah, and uh, hopefully they can. Hopefully uh, if Otterbein can really keep JCU out of their heads by doing that, they're really going to get inside the heads of the Blue Streaks. Uh, the Blue Streaks obviously looking to play this physical game, trying to throw the Cardinals off of their game by you know, pushing, shoving, being a little bit more physical than is really necessary in this game. So if Otterbein cannot let that affect them, if they can play their game, it's going to start to bother John Carroll that what they're doing isn't working. And hopefully that goes in the favor of the Otterbein Cardinals here up 4-3 with 3.50 left in the second quarter. Playing a great game is the best revenge. Any coach will tell you that. Any lacrosse coach, hockey coach, soccer coach, football coach, anybody, you name it. Composure is the key in sports. We've heard it many times from many coaches. I'm sure, if you've ever played any of you, if you've ever played a sport, that's always the thing to keep in mind, especially in these contact sports where these guys are, you know, constantly going at it. They don't have, you know, they don't have the um, protection that a lot of other sports do, especially in lacrosse. You know, Matt, as you said, you know, 20 plus players on a field. There's a lot of room to move around. There's a lot of things that you can get away with that you normally wouldn't be able to get away with even in a sport like hockey. Hockey, sure, they allow fighting, but away from the play, it's just not as easy. Cardinals look to take on the main advantage. They got six on five down low on the opposite, on the offensive side. They look to rotate it around. O'Neill discussing maybe a little little trick play there with Tyner. A little fake shot there, trying to throw the blue streaks off. He doesn't have it, though. They weren't falling for that one as O'Neill will try to bring it out behind the net. Back to Tyner. Cardinals are working it around. That's Giuliano with it. Back to Sullivan at the point. Near side, he'll hand it over back to Tyner again. Tyner to Giuliano. Down low to Sullivan. Sullivan, wait. Excuse me, Sullivan. That's him waiting down low in front of that net. O'Neal now. He's got room to shoot, but he's not going to take it. That one picked off, but he'll fight right back for it. And that's Dadalo. He'll maintain possession for the Cardinals. Killing time off this clock is the Cardinals. As the penalty to Kincaid almost up. Kincaid now back on the field. The teams are at full strength. O'Neal still applying pressure, wearing down this John Carroll defense. As Giuliano, he'll have room to take it in. Reese back now on the field as Giuliano looks somewhere to go with it at the right point. Near side, Giuliano with some time and space, working it behind the net slowly, and he'll work it into the corner. Giuliano, 2.15 left here in the second quarter. Cardinals still on top by one. They're looking to make it a two-goal lead here as Tyner. He'll try to play it down low. Shot by Reese, scores! Jeff Reese, the native of Shaker Heights, Ohio, the senior. He gets himself back on the scoreboard for the first time in a while. That's his only, only his third goal of the season. Taking the pass from Pat Tyner across the field. 
and what a play down low in the slot and the Cardinals take the two goal lead and they get that two goal lead right back. This is really a good thing here for the Otterbein Cardinals, uh, really starting to rally back. Uh, we got nervous there for a little while as JCU scored three unanswered goals to come back from Otterbein, but now that Otterbein is back up two, hopefully they don't let this two goal lead uh, relax them and they end up giving up this lead before the end of the half. Has a foul there to Patterson. Patterson not happy with it as he escapes off the sideline. Reese in exchange, he'll take He'll take the spot of Isley. Stroop, he'll come back on the field as well with Reese. Jeff Reese with it. He'll hand it over to Stroop now. Stroop now back to Tyner at the right point. Tyner trying to move inside. He does. He'll take the shot. Scores! Pat Tyner. And that's four unanswered goals for the Cardinals. And they lead 6-3 to three with 1.38 left. And there's that low and away shot. Uh, like I said, it seems as though Brian Bettle for the Blue Streaks is really shaken up by those low shots coming around his ankles. Uh, they're a hard shot to defend. You really either have to go for that risky kick save or get your stick down there quick. And Otterbein has really picked up on that as they're now throwing everything low right at the ankles of Brian Bettle. Great individual effort there by Tyner. On the season, Pat Tyner, that's his 11th goal of the season, I believe. His 11th as he collect, he's already collected one today. Great pressure coming from the Blue Streaks yet again, but now we're starting to see that physicality and that extra play. Cardinals are trying to make him pay back for it, Matt, and that's something you said, you know, they're not letting it get under, the skin, under their skin as much, rather just trying to come back at them by putting points up. Yeah, and there it is again, they put, uh, Number four, David Whipke taking the faceoff against Otterbein's Carlos Salazar. Uh, that long pole in the faceoff is really an interesting strategy, but is something that is really working to shut down Salazar. Meantime, there's another goal, and this one for Mike Dadalo. And that's five unanswered goals for the Cardinals. Dadalo taking the pass down low. Five goals for my 16, Mike Dadalo from Mikey O'Neill. And the assist to none other than Mikey O'Neill. O'Neill, that's his 24th assist of the season. Great on the setup yet again. And as soon as we talk about composure, you talk about composure and revenge. Cardinals are getting that right now. And a huge, huge turnaround as we've seen here with only 58.2 seconds left. Less than a minute left. And the Cardinals are now up 7-3. to three. And that's what I said, you know, if... You let John Carroll get in your head, then you're going to go down in this game. Uh, but if you don't let them get in your head, you're going to get in the head of John Carroll. Timeout called by Colin Hartnett. He looks to rally his players together after a great effort, great comeback. Five unanswered goals. Brian Small, he looks a little unhappy there, shaking his head right now. They're going to rally it together. And if you're, you know, from, from a John Carroll standpoint, you know, what do you do from here now? You realize that, you know this game, this physical game is just not is just not working now. The Cardinals are taking advantage of all those turnovers and all those opportunities, Matt. Now I think if I'm Brian Small in this situation, uh, I'm going to say the same thing to my team that I am sure that Colin Hartnett said to his team early in the game: Don't let them get in your head. You know, play our game. Now, JCU's game might be this physical game, and maybe they stick with it. Uh, and I don't think that's necessarily their issue. I think the issue is that Otterbein has started to pick them apart. They found the holes in their defense, and they are not intimidated by this John Carroll team, uh, which I'm going to go out on a limb and say the other nine teams that John Carroll has beaten was really intimidated. So it's really getting in the heads of the Blue Streaks, and I'm sure that Brian Small is telling them, Relax, calm down. We're not out of this game yet. John Carroll, 9-1 coming into today as the teams will break their huddles. Both teams looking to settle things down a bit. 58.2 seconds left. Cardinals will begin with possession. Another goal here would be huge for the Cardinals going into this half with a lot of momentum. Across, as Matt mentioned, a not a not a sport you can sit back in. But O'Neill will set it up behind the net now in the corner. 
And that's Willis, excuse me. He'll take possession of it, looking to go with it somewhere, has nobody. Waits the call from the official and we're back in play. And Dadalo, will, he will work it behind in the corner, now up at the point for O'Neill. O'Neill, he'll look to hand it off now, that's Willis. Willis back to Dadalo. Bach will work it in behind the net. Cardinals looking to kill time on this clock. Less than 10 seconds left now in the first half. Bach now trying to get it to the front of the net. Cardinals got to get that shot away. Looks like they're not going to. Long lead pass by Orcutt. That one is no good. That one way over the net. A long shot attempt there by the Blue Streaks. And that marks the end of this first half here. Cardinals on top, 7-3 to three after five unanswered goals. And the two teams will settle it over in the locker room. We'll be right back here on OTV.
Jenny, hold that shot. Welcome back here, Memorial Stadium, uh, on the Dwight C. Ballinger Field for some Otterbein men's lacrosse. Otterbein currently up 7-3 on the John Carroll Blue Streaks, who coming into this game were 9-1. and Otterbein sitting at a record of 5-4 and four after a victory over St. Vincent last weekend. We have some halftime stats for you. Currently, shots on goal count Otterbein 22, JCU at 6. Uh, Otterbein is also 11 of 12 faceoffs. Uh, Carlos Salazar, the faceoff specialist for Otterbein University, winning all but one of those. Goal, or uh, excuse me, ground balls, Otterbein with eight, JCU with five, and penalties still in favor, not in such a positive light of the Cardinals. Three penalties for three minutes as opposed to JCU's one penalty for one minute. Jacob, what do you think here going into the second half are going to be the keys to this game? Well, I think the key is, you know, Cardinal for the Cardinals, it's consistency, it's pressure, and feeding off the mistakes that John Carroll has started to make. Once they start to get physical, is when they started to make more mistakes. And I think if you're the Cardinals, you have to take advantage of those. You can't sit back and just, you know, force yourself into playing that same game. You have to keep it going. You know, lacrosse, the, in lacrosse, the more you can run up the score, the better it gets. And we will be back with the action in just five seconds as the halftime clock counts down. Uh, Otterbein's James Gundling going back to the south net as it looks like Brian, oh no, uh, warming up currently number 34, Kyle Lake. We'll have to see if he takes the net for JCU. We've got some other OAC lax scores right now. Baldwin Wallace, 10 at Wilmington uh, with two right now. Mount Union and Capital starts at 3.30. These are the three first ever OAC conference lacrosse games. Otterbein playing in one of them. Our tribal capital, they will play, they will play host to Otterbein next Saturday. You can hear that on WOBN. We'll wait as to hear if we can use our WOBN Ustream account or phone line. So, and uh, John and uh, myself and one of our other staffers will have that call. So, although Kyle Lake warmed up over the half for JCU, Brian Bendel, uh, Brian Bettle, excuse me, back in the net, Otterbein winning the face off possession. Uh, ball now controlled at the top by Brandon Strew. Carries and dishes around to X. It goes back around to Mikey O'Neill. Carries it in the close corner. Looking for an outlet. Throws it to the top of the key. Shot on there by Strew and a score right over Brian Bettle's head. Otterbein scoring early. Uh, right about 44 seconds into this half. Uh, that putting the score to 8-3. Yeah, great shot there by Brandon Stroop. You know, it was a tough angle on Bettle, but Bettle starting to look a little less comfortable in net as his teammates starting to huddle around him a little bit. You know, it's not moving as well. Uh, looked like he could have jumped on that one possibly, but as we said, you know, going right over the head, you know, you'd rather it miss your head than hit you. Uh, so we go back to the center. Carlos Salazar down against uh, JCU's number 23, Kyle Patterson. Salazar winning possession again. Mikey O'Neill with possession into the zone, throws it the whole way across to Sullivan. Sullivan around back to X to Mike Dadalo, who loses possession. Possession now, JCU. Uh, controlled by Kevin Warner, the defenseman from Kent, Ohio, for the Blue Streaks. Throws it the whole way across to defenseman uh, Ed Hannon. Down now is the ball into the mid zone, uh, controlled by Jackson Twomey. Twomey dishes to 21. Michael Roth looking for an outlet, pressured heavily by the Otterbein defense. Loses possession, picked up again. Ball now on the sideline, kicked away by Twomey. Twomey cannot get a hold of this ground ball, pressured incredibly heavily by the Otterbein defense. Other players in to help. Ball picked up by number 22, Declan O'Grady. JCU with possession in the close corner. Looking now for an outlet is O'Grady. Around at the X, throws it out to the top of the key to Jaska. 
Jaska looking for a pass. Very little pressure. Throws it over to Dakota Thomas. Thomas carries in. Looking for the shot. Nowhere to go. No lane. Pulls it out. Breaks away from the defense. Throws it to the center. A huge shot there uh, by That was DeClan blocked, O'Grady. it looks like. Woo. <laughs> And a shot from the top of the key thrown way over. Possession stays with JCU as they win the chase. Carried in from the X. Dish over. Hard shot there. Controlled by Gundling. Gundling drops the outlet pass. Now slowing down the possession. Looks for a long outlet. Going the whole way. Connects with Andy Hufford. Andy Hufford back to Sullivan. Sullivan down to the X to Mikey O'Neill. O'Neill looking for the outlet. Throws to the close side to Marcus Willis. Willis back to Klippa. Klippa now with the ball and very little pressure. Plenty of time to figure it out. Uh, this JCU defense really backing off now, not wanting to make any more mistakes than they already have. Carried in by 44, Connor Bach. Ball makes its way back to O'Neal at the X. O'Neal close to Dadalo. Dadalo back to Bach. Otterbein working the cycle now. Possession to O'Neal. Looks around the uh, around the crease. Nowhere to go. Back and forth between O'Neal and Sullivan. O'Neal fakes the shot. Continues to carry back around the X to the other side. O'Neal throws to Dadalo. Dadalo with the huge shot. Misses. Oh. Goes close to O'Neal's knee. Uh, but he is close enough to the sideline to win that chase. Picks up possession. Stays with Otterbein. O'Neal now at the X. Sullivan on the far side with the shot blocked. Ball loose. Ground ball possession. One by O'Neal. Oh. A good look, but a bad pass to the top of the crease. Uh, possession makes its way to the JCU defense, who are pressured incredibly heavy by the Otterbein attack squad. Connor Bach on like glue to that defenseman. O'Neal picks it up right on the sideline. Bach with the empty net attempt. Uh, Bedel makes his way back to the net, but gets oh, wow, torn what a play by Marcus Willis, who puts it in for Otterbein's ninth goal, tripling John Carroll's score. Uh, this does not look like a 9-1 and one team. Otterbein just making John, Car John Carroll look foolish uh, on the defense and really putting the pressure on tight. Yeah, that was, no, that was a smart, smart play. And, you know, great forechecking pressure, as, as mentioned, by Mikey O'Neill, willing to scoop up that ball. It all started with him, but, it also, but you know, it, finishing it was Connor Bach. You know, what a smart play not to, not to take the shot. Wait for the late man, Willis. Easy go, easy pass, easy score. 9-3 Otterbein. And as we go back to the center line, another faceoff. There is an early movement call uh, on Salazar. That possession goes to John Carroll. Picked up and carried in uh, by James Blake, who dishes the ball quickly off to Gary Anile. Anile looking for a pass, nowhere to go. Touches into the box to break the count. Uh, passes back to Daniel Kincaid. Kincaid looking for an entrance. Breaks in against Alex Titus. A huge shot there goes to the left uh, by Steven Luce. Uh, the possession stays with JCU now at the X is Daniel Kincaid. Passes to the top of the key up or to the top of the crease, excuse me, to Michael Roth, who puts it in between the legs of Gundling. Takes the score to 9 4 Otterbein. That's a goal for John Carroll that could could loom huge, you know, trying to finally get some pressure on, you know, after you know, we had mentioned back early in early in the first quarter how, you know, Otterbein was up on top, you know, they were up up in shots eight to six. Now it's 26 to 11. John Carroll finally starting to apply some pressure though yet again. We're going to see how that impacts this game. So as we go back to the center, Salazar digs and wins another faceoff, his 13th on the day. Possession carried in by Otterbein. Jeff Reese with the ball. Looks for the huge out to defenseman in the midi zone, number six, Matt Isley.
Controlled by Otterbein down to the back of the X. Thrown over to Pat Tyner. Tyner looks to O'Neal in the close side. O'Neal jogs the ball back around to the back of the net. Looking for somewhere to go. This John Carroll defense really tightened up around the crease. Mike Dadalo to the outside. Uh, throws to the top. Back to Reese. To Dadalo. To O'Neal who botches the pass receive on a choppy pass off the ground. That possession goes to John Carroll. Not sure where Mikey O'Neal was looking there. You know, he had, had a couple guys with him. Had nobody with him. He needed extra support. Nonetheless, good pressure here by the Cardinals. Uh, that ball carried in by Spratkey, but knocked away by the Cardinals. Uh, possession back to Otterbein. Carried in with speed is Watson. Watson to Sullivan. Sullivan to O'Neal. O'Neal calls out for the play. Uh, setting up now is the Otterbein offense. Looking to throw this game into the double digits. O'Neal trying to set his players up. Looks to the close side to Dadalo. Dadalo catches the high pass. Throws to the top to Reese. Across uh, to Brandon Strew. Otterbein working this heavy, heavy cycle now, which has really produced well for them in this game. Uh, that shot ripped wide by Sullivan, but the chase won uh, by Tyner. Otterbein still with possession. O'Neal at the X to Dadalo at the close side. Jeff Reese at the top of the box. Throws across. Here comes the cycle again from Otterbein. Looking for the outside shots now is Otterbein. Uh, Pat Tyner controls at the top of the box. He and Reese play with it together. O'Neal at the bottom to Dadalo on the close side. Just waiting until they get a shot. They try and force it in. Can't get through the defense. Ground ball possession. Picked up by JCU, but quickly lost again. Uh, the race is on for Otterbein. There is a whistle. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be possession to John Carroll. So that possession goes by officiating to John Carroll. Um, Brian Small still not happy about that call, though. Uh, interestingly enough, even though his team has the ball. So that is carried in by O'Grady. O'Grady pressured hard by the Otterbein defense. Pick set by uh, Keegan Flinter from the same high school as O'Grady. Flinter playing at the top of the box in the far corner. Pressured heavily by Hayden Novicki. Flinter throws to the incoming Alex Titus. Uh, excuse me, Dakota Thomas, who carries in but loses possession. Ball in the possession of the Otterbein defense. Throwing across there to the offense on the long outlet. A huge oh. rip by number 11, Brogan Orcutt, goes wide left, but the chase is won uh, by Michael Sullivan, and that possession stays with Otterbein. Sullivan sneaks it in around the net before John Carroll is even ready, puts it in on a Bettle who isn't even paying attention, puts the score up to 10-4. Otterbein now in the double digits. John and Carroll cannot right, stop making right, mistakes. Two, and right now, I think for Brian Small, you got to look at taking Bettle out of the game. I mean, it's just, you, you don't want to, the last thing you want is for your goalie to continue to lose confidence. You know, I, I'm aware of what what happened to Patrick Juan. You know, he was down 9-1 to one back in 95. You know, coach kept him in and everything just to, you know, try to get him to suck it up a little bit. But you, you can't have that happen here if you're John Carroll. you got to look at getting more support for him at the very least. Uh, right now, Otterbein's just taking advantage of every mistake that John Carroll is making. And it seems like, you know, that physical play is starting to come back to bite him a little bit. You know, there's a saying, work smarter, not harder. And Otterbein's working smarter than John Carroll is right now. And as Salazar wins another possession, uh, that ball turned over in the mid zone to John Carroll. Um, there is a flag on the play. And it looks like it's going to go to Watson for the extra for interference, I believe it is. Watson not happy about that. You know, he knows it, but again, he's trying to do his job. Uh, Otterbein trying to crank it up a little bit and you know, trying to let John Carroll know that, hey, you're screwing up. You're going to pay. And that a good call by the officials. Uh, but Watson, obviously a target of this John Carroll team. 
really coming in an inopportune time for the Cardinals. So as the Cardinals go to the man down, um, there's a pushing call, only a 30 second penalty, but believe me in this game, 30 seconds can be enough to really do some damage. Uh, so with that 30 second releasable call, hopefully Otterbein can hold off this JCU EMO. Looks like a little discussion there uh, at the top of the box. The officials talking to number 11, Brian Jaska, who carries the ball in. JCU looks to cycle around. Controlled at the top by Jaska, thrown across to Flinter. Jaska over now to Anil. Ball oh. is in there but is finished off by Declan O'Grady. Gundling attempted the diving save, couldn't quite get there in time, made the first save, but not the second. Uh, that releases the penalty on Watson, but brings the score to 10-5 Otterbein. JCU trying to battle back, not letting Otterbein get these unanswered goals and go on another big run. We take you now back to the center as Salazar walks up to take the face off against Ed Hannon, the freshman out of Chicago, Illinois. Close enough to my birthplace to be notable, I'd say. Uh, they assume the position. There is an early call on Salazar. Possession goes automatically to at, JCU. That's second uh, early movement on Salazar. Not happy, Hartnett sending him out of the game as a result. So JCU loses their short possession in the offense, uh, picked up there by Watson in the back who carries it up. Watson walks to the top of the box. Not a lot of pressure, but dishes back to Gundling to look for the setup, who throws long down to O'Neal, can't catch the pass, but bats it down in a very smart play. Uh, that picked up by Dadalo. Ball controlled now by Tyner at the top of the box. Incredibly smart play there by O'Neal. Missed the pass, but instead of trying to pick up the ground ball, batted it away to an open space so it could be picked up by Dadalo. Now O'Neal with the ball, looking to the top of the box. Otterbein looking to set up a cycle now, slowing this game down so they can pick apart this JCU defense. Don't want to make any more mistakes um, and let JCU battle back here. So now O'Neal looks to pass, throws it to Reese at the top of the box, who throws it over and around and back to O'Neal in the side. Otterbein running this slow, slow four-man cycle. Uh, that ball dropped there by Reese and picked up oh. by JCU, but that's going to be a penalty against the Cardinals. Whoa. Oh, a little bit of retaliation there by uh, Jack McLean. I think he's, yeah, he's going to go too. They're sending him off. Referees now trying to control this extracurricular activity, uh, making a smart call to send both players to the box. Uh, so that is going to go on Otterbein's number 15, Brandon Strew, um, for probably a push call, uh, as well as there. we do know that there will be a JCU player in the box. We don't know yet who it's going to be. Yep, it looks like it's uh, McLean himself, and that's a that's a that's a silly penalty right there. If you're John Carroll, yeah, that's not one you can afford to take. Cardinals will take it. Luckily, you know, if Stroop doesn't make that extra, you know, if Stroop doesn't initiate that extra play, you know, McLean doesn't respond, but he retaliates, and that that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to kill you. You know, if you if you get a penalty called against your opponent, take advantage of that, not advantage of the player. Exactly. Uh, and it is always the second person who gets caught and that it holds true for almost any sport. Um, there, Brian Small fist bumping his player in the box for that extra effort. Uh, that is an interesting choice, but we do have a one minute releasable penalty on Brandon Strew for an illegal body check, um, as well as a 30 second on Brandon Strew for a conduct foul. Uh, we don't yet know the times, but will probably be a 30-second on McLean 
for another conduct foul. Officials still discussing uh, what exactly is going on with the penalties. Play has not yet resumed. Four eighteen here left in the quarter, and we will go into a timeout. Yeah, it looks like right now, I think if you know going into this timeout for both teams, I think the key is for Otterbein, it's pretty simple. You know, you gotta you gotta take advantage you gotta take advantage of what you have right now. But meantime, the next broadcast live broadcast uh, uh, will be April 23rd against Wilmington at 7 p.m. here at Memorial Stadium. That's a Wednesday night game. As many students as that being Wednesday night, hopefully many students will be able to make it out to that one. Come and support your Cardinals. First night game of the year here in Memorial Stadium for the Cardinals. Uh, that'll be a fun one. Um, and another conference game as Otterbein takes on Wilmington. Uh, Wilmington, who at last check was down 10-2 to two on Baldwin Wallace. We'll have to see if we can pull that score up for you and see if there's been any change so far. So, Jacob, uh, what do you think Colin Hartnett is saying here to his team uh, as they are in the huddle while uh, this penalty is going on? Well, as I said earlier, I think you have to, you know, just make sure that you're not, you know, if you're Brandon Stroop, that's a penalty that you can't, not necessarily can't take, but don't try and mimic what John Carroll's doing, and that's getting back you know, for the plays that you make. I think if you're Otterbein, you just have to continue to crank up that pressure, crank up the speed a little bit, get John Carroll moving fast. We've seen Otterbein is a very fast-paced, up-tempo team, and John Carroll at certain points has struggled with it. A lot of teams, when Otterbein takes them on and they, you know, they use that speed to their advantage, it catches up to you, and it's gotten to Brian Bettle so far. Bettle's still in the net, surprisingly, but, you know, you don't want to make that for long if you're Otterbein. So I would like to point out here quickly before the play starts uh, that that Baldwin Wallace team has gone up 14-2 on Wilmington. Uh, so they will go up here as Otterbein looks to play them on the 23rd. Uh, but we do look to resume play here at the field. So uh, we have a minute and 30 seconds for Brandon Strew in the box with only 30 seconds on JCU's Jack McLean for another conduct foul. Uh, so that ball carried in with a touch-up by Gary Anile. Anile breaks away from the defense, runs in on Watson. Anile looks for a pass but continues to hold on to the ball, really killing this time um, of this double penalty. Uh, McLean will be released here in just a few seconds, and he is. Uh, McLean stays off as is replaced by Tommy Adolph from Buffalo, New York. So now as the EMO of JCU looks to cycle the ball around, it is controlled on the far side and tossed back to the top of the box. Uh, moving so quickly, it's getting difficult to call out the players, uh, but this cycle running around trying to break through this Cardinals defense. But that ball is dropped with a hard shove there by Keegan Flinter. There is a flag, a delayed penalty will be called on the JCU Blue Streaks as the ball goes back to Gundling. Uh, Otterbein now looks for an outlet pass to take advantage of this delayed call, which I'm sure will come on that extra effort there by Flinter. Gundling passes across to Tyner, who carries across the line, uh, is met by a swinging stick, but holds on to the ball, avoids heavy defense, but drops it. JCU picks up the ball and is quickly whistled down, so Spratt, he will not have a chance to run it in. Uh, the officials making the call. It will be Flinter who goes to the box to sit this penalty. Uh, we will have to wait until we get word in the box what exactly that penalty is. Gundling hucking the flag back to the officials as we wait for play to resume. Otterbein will hold possession in the JCU offensive zone. So as we wait for play to resume, Flinter not happy with that penalty. Um, obviously upset by his body language, irritated that he hasn't been able to do much in this game. 
but the ball will be carried in by Mikey O'Neill, who fakes the pass and dishes off to the opposite side. Far and away from us, Dadalo now close to us with possession, throws back to O'Neill, who fakes the shot twice, drops the ball, but picks it back up. Goes the whole way across to Watson. Watson with a huge rip, goes wide left, but Tyner there to win the chase, picks up the ball on the sideline. Tyner now to O'Neal. O'Neal carries to the top of the box and throws back to Dadalo. Uh, Dadalo now controlling and up to the top to O'Neal. O'Neal goes over to Sullivan. Sullivan carries up to the top of the box, dances with it just a hair, throws over with another huge rip that goes wide by Pat Tyner, but Otterbein wins that chase as well. Uh, Flinter is in for unnecessary roughness. We find out a minute penalty Otterbein to take advantage of. Tyner now on the close side of the box, closest to us, throws up to the top to Sullivan. Sullivan across to Dadalo, who can't catch the pass, but there's no pressure to pick up the ground. Dadalo throws to the X to O'Neal. Uh, JCU, the penalty is released, and number seven rushes in. There is Alex Spratke to play some extra D. That pass goes way, way far. Otterbein opts not to chase it, and that possession goes now to JCU. JCU now will be able to carry in from the sideline. Brian Jaska picks it up, tries to break the defense, almost jukes himself out. Running in now, though, is Jaska at the top of the box. A hard check there thrown by four Otterbein defensemen. He holds on, throws to the top of the box. Declan O'Grady controls, looking to bring it into the zone. Ops to dish it back to Jaska. Jaska now plays on the close side of the box. Looking for an outlet pass, but not a lot of pressure. Throws it to the X there to Daniel Kincaid. Kincaid against two Otterbein defensemen. Carries it around the far side of the crease. Drops the ball as picked up by the Otterbein defense. And quickly outletted uh, all the way down to Sullivan. Sullivan controls with a one-handed grab. Oh, falls down there, but that ball is batted away and now makes its way to a battle. Uh, something to point out is this field must be slippery. It looks dry from here, but obviously I haven't been down on it. Players falling left and right and the ball not rolling very far when it does hit the ground. Uh, but that ball now brought in by James Blake, the midi out of Baltimore, Maryland, who throws it back to Michael Roth, Michael Roth to Declan O'Grady. O'Grady throws the pass over the head of Kincaid and possession will now go to Otterbein in their defensive zone. Uh, that ball picked up by Brogan Orcutt, who looks for the outlet, throws it down to Mikey O'Neill on the sideline. O'Neill breaks through the defense, not a lot on him, tries to dish to Dadalo, but that pass is knocked down and away, picked up by Tommy Adolph. Adolph with a huge long toss. That outlet ends up going right back to Otterbein making the attempt to throw it into the net there before the end of the period. Uh, oh, quarter, excuse me. We are now uh, into the break for the last quarter. We go into this break. Otterbein up 10 to 5. 15 minutes left to play is still a lot of time. Plenty of time for JCU to bring it back, but hopefully also plenty of time for Otterbein to throw a few more between the legs, over the head, or over the shoulder of Brian Bettel, who... As we have pointed out quite a number of times, Small, the coach of JCU, has not opted to pull. Uh, a little surprising after letting in 10 goals, most of them coming in quick succession. Uh, but we do assume that we will see Bettle returning to play here in the fourth period. So as both coaches rally their teams, Small talking specifically to his offense uh, right now as Colin Hartnett addresses his entire team. Um, Jacob, here going into the last quarter, what do you think is the key for Otterbein to, I mean, obviously hold up on their lead, but what do you think they need to do to get it done? I don't think they necessarily need to hold up, but they can need to keep pushing a little bit so that, you know, once you get toward the end of the game, you know, you're not panicking to protect your lead. It's uh, no lead is safe in lacrosse. Even if it's a five goal lead, six goal lead, we've seen it happen before where teams score four or five unanswered goals. So, I think if you're them, you got to keep that up tempo going. Uh, you got to have guys like Dadalo and O'Neill and Giuliano chipping in. Even guys like Pat Tyner and Brandon Stroop as well. Uh, Brogan Orcutt, he's been a huge asset to this defense all afternoon. Uh, he's got to continue to make an impact. All these guys do. So as we go back to the center, 
Uh, the officials have a brief meeting with some of their table workers, and uh, we look for play. Salazar now facing the south on our left side. JCU's um, what appears though Kyle Patterson to take the face off facing the north on our right. Players crouch against the ball. Whistle is blown. Salazar with a quick win. Although possession is gained in the Otterbine zone by John Carroll. John Carroll's Declan O'Grady looks for an outlet and throws the whole way across to Flinter. Flinter, the hothead, we have seen a number of times, throws it down to the X to Kincaid. Kincaid breaks through the defense and looks to run it around, but is quickly locked off by Otterbein's defense. A lot of pressure uh, there on Matt Isley. Oh, great. A great job there by Isley. As soon as I say that, though, a huge turnover by the Cardinals. There Looks is, like we're going to get a penalty here. But I don't know what, what it's going to be. They uh, do call it a good goal. Official signal for the good goal. So that will put us at 10 to 6 JCU. We'll have to see. Uh, how and where that flag goes. Yeah, it looks like the goal is going to be good, you know, trying to pick up who that was on that turnover, though. But, you know, that was, you know, you got to give the Blue Streaks credit there. Keegan Flinner not giving up on the play. He he was right. Luckily, he was the only man there. Picked that one up. So Daniel Kincaid will get the credit for that goal as we go back to the center. Officials now with some extra discussion as we walk away from the faceoff. The penalty will go against Otterbein's Trevor Kajowski, uh, the defenseman. Yeah, it's Kajowski, the one that turned it over. And that will bring play without a faceoff back into the offensive zone. So we will see that 10 to 6 lead uh, start to get a little bit smaller uh, as we have 14 18 remaining in the half as well as in this quarter. JCU now will have the opportunity to carry in from half and they opt to pass it off. Gary Anile. Anile back to the back of the play. Flinter takes control, who dishes to Los. JCU now running a quick cycle. They carry up Flinter in the top corner to Anil to Los. Back to Anil at the very top of the box. Looks like he's going to shoot, opts not to. Anil plays with it, dishes to Flinter. Flinter looks for the shot, can't get an open lane. Really going to need to watch that warding call. But the shot, oh, what from a shot from the top of the box goes right between the legs of James Gundling, who looks obviously shaken by these last two goals. The Otterbein defense not happy. And that penalty on Kajowski is going to be an unsportsmanlike conduct, which is a non-releasable penalty. Um, Otter, or excuse me, lacrosse, different than many other sports. If a non-releasable penalty is called on a player, uh, just because the other team scores, that does not mean that the player is able to come back into play. Uh, these non-releasable penalties often give uh, teams a chance to just rally up the scores, and it's something you always hate to have called. So hopefully the Otterbein defense can pick up Salazar with a huge oh, important play. Man, carries in and is shoved there with absolutely no call. Uh, our officials down in the stands are not happy about it, nor is Salazar, but Otterbein controls Mikey O'Neill outside of the box far and away from us. I like how you said that officials in the stands. Yeah, uh, <laughs> they are obviously on our side as that was a dirty, dirty push there on Salazar, which was missed by the referees. The ball carried in now by Pat Tyner as the penalty on Kajowski runs out. Tyner with the ball, looks back to the X, throws around Otterbein now looking for the cycle as O'Neill controls at the top of the box. Great job by Otterbein just killing the clock here. Dadalo to Tyner, 
Tyner back and around, throws off. A small cycle now working while O'Neill takes it back at the top of the box. Mikey Dadalo on the close side. Back to O'Neill at the top. Tyner close and in, but does oh, not shoot. Taken the shot. That would have been a backhander there, though. Otterbein now will really work on killing this clock off. 12.25 left in the game, and they do not want to see JCU put any more in on him. So as O'Neill fakes the shot, he will carry around looking for an outlet. Fakes the pass, throws up into the top. Oh. The shot that Rock gets off of the post. Um, and goes right back to the man who shot it, Mike Dadalo. That was actually Jeff oh. Reese, the one that took that shot. He can't believe it. He was lucky that one got right back to him. Second opportunity for the Cardinals. Got to take advantage of it. Exactly. Uh, so we hope that we can continue this cycle. A huge shot goes over the net by Mike O'Neill and is uh, chased down by Otterbein. So possession stays with the Cardinals. Otterbein really able to eat up some time here in their offensive zone. Uh, the defense of JCU needs to get this ball back, but they don't want to make any more mistakes than they have all game long. So as Dadalo controls, throws it up to O'Neal. O'Neal back to Dadalo. Dadalo to Tyner. Tyner around to a player whose number I cannot distinguish from here. Tyner takes it at the X and throws back to Jeff Reese. That pass goes far and away, and possession is called to stay with the Cardinals. Yeah, it's one thing you mentioned about lacrosse last week, Matt, is that you have to, you know, if you're if you're the one nearest to that ball and you're reaching out for it, you're the one that gets possession of it. Kind of like, you know, they're treating it like the boards rule, I guess. You know, as if there's boards in lacrosse. There isn't, obviously, but you got to think that if there is, if there are, bound, you know, if there are board, you know, if there's a protection there, you know, it's got to, you're trying to make the play. So Otterbein takes possession back. That ball controlled by Reese on the far side. Gives it to Dadalo at the top, who throws it to Tyner on the close side of the box. Cycled around hard by Otterbein. Uh, looking for the shot, but not looking to take anything risky. Tyner controls on our close side as they keep this cycle up. Uh, who Tyner throws it to Stroop, who works it the ball around the X controlled again by Stroop in the bottom of the box up to the top and a huge shot there by Mikey O'Neill will go in over the left shoulder of Bettle that goal could not come at a better time with 10-18 remaining in this game that will put Otterbein up 11-7 really crushing the momentum that JCU had built up there I think it all, and it was all built up by, you know, by Otterbein. That momentum was all built up by the pressure that they generated off of, um, you know, off right off of the penalty kill, essentially. You know, after killing that non-releasable penalty by Kajowski, the Cardinals were able to build up constant pressure. JCU never got it beyond even out, not even really outside the box, essentially. So Salazar with another great win. He will rip the shot oh. himself, and it goes over, but the chase won there. Uh, by Stowe. O'Neill controls the ball at the top and throws it back to uh, long stick midi Matt Isley. Connor Bach with the ball throws back to O'Neill in the top corner of the box far away from us. O'Neill looks for the outlet and finds it in Marcus Willis. Marcus Willis looks to, to get a touch, throws back to Connor Bach. Bach opting not to go into the box, touches up there, carries in, throws back to the X to Mikey O'Neill. O'Neill dances around the crease, almost falls, but stays on his feet. O'Neill with the ball, heavy pressure on O'Neill, but throws oh, a nice to Connor play. Bach. Wow. Connor Bach, who puts it in over Bettle. No idea what's happening. That will put Otterbein up 12-7. Well, that was a, there was a huge gap in the, in the JCU defense there. Great odd man situation to take advantage of for the Cardinals. And that was O'Neill that saw that one coming. He saw the spot. He saw Bach creeping in there. Nobody from the JCU defense was able to pick him up. JCU defense obviously upset about this, not happy with the way this game is going. Uh, you can tell by their body language they're starting to feel defeated, but we take it back to the center. Salazar 
with another big win oh, and a big huge hit. hit. They'll call Salazar for that hit on Daniel Kincaid. So possession will go to the Blue Streaks as Salazar will go to the box. Hartnett obviously unhappy, but at the same time, you got to kind of understand that play there. A little bit of an interference by Salazar. So they will give possession at the top in the center to JCU. That ball picked up by Gary Anile. Anile carries in, throws off to uh, Keegan Flinter. JCU starts the cycle again, moving much more quickly than Otterbein's offense, trying to uh, dwindle this lead, still with hope left in this game. Keegan Flinter falls, loses the ball, but picks it back up. There is a timeout called by Brian Small, and we will see these teams come together for a timeout with 8.50 remaining in the game. Otterbein currently with the lead 12 to 7. Uh, so we have said time and time again, Jacob, that uh, each team needs to stay in the head of the other team, but no one can let their opponents get in their head. So if you're the coaches here for either side, what are you saying uh, to your attack and to your defense here with just eight minutes left? Uh, for Hartnett, I'm saying pretty simple. You know, it's the way that they've set, they've set up the last two goals. Take your time with it. Don't rush it. Kill the time off the clock. Continue to cycle it around. Work the, you know, wear them out a little bit. Get for, you know, force John Carroll to think a little bit more. I think if you're, and now if you're Brian Small, on the other hand, you, you got to take advantage of what time you do have to build some momentum up with penalty, you know, either be drawing a penalty and getting the, uh, the extra man on. Or, you know, even I would not be surprised, you know, if uh, Brian Bettle's still in, pulling him up a little bit on certain plays, getting him involved a little bit. Uh, so before we start play, we'd like to point out that Baldwin Wallace has come away in the first ever OAC lacrosse victory, 15 over Wilmington's three. Uh, and that is the next game that Otterbein will play against Wilmington under the lights on the 23rd. So we will have to see how Wilmington comes into that game. Um, Excuse me, I, uh, yes, they will play Wilmington on the 23rd. That'll be their next home game. Yeah, that will be their next home game. Uh, they do have Baldwin, Wallace, and Capital away the next game that we will cover. Uh, also, there is one more game which will kick off at 3.30, that Capital game, um, who will, as I caught earlier, be another oh, one what of a save. opponent. So, ball picked up by Watson as Otterbein controls and Gundling makes a stellar save. Watson looks for the toss, and finds it in Dadalo. Dadalo now back to the top of the box. O'Neal controls outside as Otterbein works to set up. Tyner coming out, Strew coming out. Otterbein looking to set up one last offense and hopefully they can hold it but they do lose it on a bad play by O'Neal heavy pressure by number 19 for JCU Tommy Adolph and possession will go to the blue streaks but another timeout called so we will have to wait on that possession as the teams come together at the sidelines for another meeting with their coaching staff yeah, uh, Brian Small trying to settle things down a little bit um, you know, and they've done, he's done that, you know, the past couple timeouts, uh, give them, give these guys credit, you know, how they've responded. They haven't let the game get too far out of hand, but you know, for Otterbein, it's been, it's been all speed kills. And I think that's a, that's a saying that you see a lot in sports that, you know, it's really, and it's really worked in Otterbein's favor today. Uh, stat wise shots. It's not even close though. John Carroll has to generate more pressure on James Gunling. Uh, Gunling has looked solid in the shots he has faced, however. So I think if you're John Carroll, you got to set it up a little bit more. Cardinals, just keep pouring the shots out. Keep pouring the pressure on, as I said. No harm done there. Um, you know, just not, you know, not a whole lot of, you know, there seems to be a lot less energy in John Carroll right now, Matt. You know, I've noticed that, you know, as they've gotten less physical, they've had to get, you know, they've had to divert from their game a little bit because Otterbein has changed that. 
They've cranked, they've cranked up the tempo in the second half. You know, they started really cranking it up late in the first half. They've continued that momentum in the second half, and it's cost the Blue Streaks. It has, and uh, JCU obviously a very physical team, uh, and now that they found out that that physicality is really not going to get them too far against this Otterbein Cardinals team, uh, they're really struggling to bring it back. Um, obviously, like you said, this game has not run too far away from the Blue Streaks. Uh, they are only down by 5, 12-7 here with 7.53 remaining in the game. Uh, but JCU does look tired, and that's another thing that we pointed out during uh, the first half. Otterbein's roster is enormous, um, absolutely huge compared to the roster of uh, John Carroll. So JCU will control and take possession down in their defensive zone. Ball picked up by Kincaid, who is doubled by O'Neal and uh, Watson. But the ball makes its way back to the JCU defense, who will carry it out slowly. Controlled now by Tommy Adolph. Adolph looks across the field to Kevin Werner. Werner looks for a pass, nowhere to go, is pressured by O'Neal. Werner across the line. Kind of a neutral zone trapping defense being employed here by the Cardinals, not letting them across very easily. Werner with the shovel toss to Jaska. Jaska throws down to Kincaid, who fakes the pass and controls the ball at X. Looks to carry around, drops the ball right in front of the crease. Uh, that ball picked up. Ottermine player uh, looks like uh, I can't quite tell who that is, but they are slow to get up and slow to get off. And I'm trying to find out who that is here. And well, meantime, at the other end, they'll take it, though. So Otterbein puts in another one on Bettle. Uh, I do believe that goal will go to Watson, who put it between the legs of Bettle. Um, but we still not sure. Uh, that looks number like Bobby number. That's Jeff, Jeff Donachek. Donachek. And he's coming off. He came off a little bit of a little bit of a limp there. Looked like in his left thigh, a little bit of a cramp, possibly. Not sure what happened. Uh, looks like trainers are looking at the elbow of oh. Jeff Donacek. Uh, so hopefully we'll have more to come on that later. Uh, but with that goal, which that credit will go to uh, Robbie Giuliano. Uh, so great goal by him there. And we'll go back to the center with Salazar. And they will put their defenseman, David Whipke, uh, will JCU against Salazar. So we take it to the center. Whipke and Salazar bend down. Whistle is blown. Whipke can shovel under Salazar, but possession is won by Otterbein. Thrown to O'Neal. O'Neal now controls outside of the box. Gets a touch. Carries back out. Throwing to the center to Tyner. Tyner looks to carry in and does. Chooses not to shoot. Goes back to O'Neal in the far side of the box. Who throws across and back. O'Neal now controls at the X. Otterbein looking to run a trick play. But JCU picks up on it and knocks the ball quickly away from Mikey O'Neal. Outlet pass to Jason Twomey, who looks to carry across with speed, but is chased. Otterbein can't quite break him, but he is carried all the way to the sideline and shut down by Drew Watson. Oh, he's, and that's, yeah, Je Twomey's slow to get up there. He was pinned to the turf. Looks like he's favoring that knee. Twomey's hurting. Uh, we will look to see what comes from that. Trainers out on the field. Uh, so we will take a short minute here to talk about the next Otterbein broadcast. Uh, our next sports broadcast will be on the 23rd. Uh, Otterbein against Wilmington under the lights here at Memorial Stadium. Uh, so that will be at 7 p.m. on the 23rd. We hope you can join us. Twomey now rolling over. Uh, looks to be in pain, but nothing too serious as they manage to stand him up. He will walk off the field. Uh, well, uh, well as, as that's being thrown, though, we're gonna, it looks like we're going to get unsportsmanlike conduct. 
on, uh, that looks like on both teams possibly. There is a definite foul on Drew Watson, but a flag still on the field waiting to be confirmed. Uh, Twomey looks as though there's something wrong with his back, so that may go as a cross check there on Watson. We'll have to see what they call. Uh, but Twomey got up and walked off on his own accord, so we are glad to see uh, that although he is hurting, he will be all right. Yeah, it's a scary injury, though. That's it's one thing to hear, you know, knee or something, but back, you know, and he's gonna. Looks like his afternoon's gonna be done. Trainers tending to him a little bit, possibly doing some, uh, you know, possible concussion uh, testing for some concussion symptoms as well. Uh, looks like he took a couple hits there, so definitely a, a trainer's precaution there in every sport: back injuries and head injuries. You know, you can break as many bones as you want, but. You know, when when one of those injuries happens, it's it, it's a uh, it's a you got to take it seriously. So it looks like after all of the play, we have uh, Kevin Werner number 17 for John Carroll kneeling in the box. Uh, we'll have to wait and see if there is a call on him. There's nothing that we have yet, but that shot turned away by Gundling. What a save! Wow. Carried across with speed and tossed over to Watson. Watson controls at the top of the box, throws down low to Giuliano. Giuliano carries around the crease. Throws the whole way up to the top of the box. Ball makes its way out of the box to Mikey O'Neill, who controls at the top, looking for the dish, fakes the dish off to Giuliano, controls. Oh. Carried around the box is the Otterbein offense, not setting up the cycle that we have seen a number of times in this game, instead opting to one man at a time kill off just a little bit of clock. Uh, but they will look to take a run. Looks like Jeff Reese. Reese oh, nice throws pass. over to Tyner, and Tyner puts it in over the right shoulder of Bettel. Great feed by Jeff Reese. Great vision. And that will be a huge, huge goal for Otterbein, doubling now the score of John Carroll, leading 14 to seven uh, with only four and a half minutes left to play. Still plenty of time to put in seven goals, but it leads one to wonder if this John Carroll team has the energy to keep on scoring. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna get some a little bit some uh, some decoys in or some backups in here for Otterbein. Get the player, get some guys some playing time. Uh, coming on the field, George Wright, the senior of Hudson Walsh Jesuit, and uh, Alex Umble, the sophomore out of Lancaster Catholic High School. Two guys that don't see n nearly as much playing time as some others, but deserving of it right now, given the hard work. So Marcus Willis carries in and is on the outside of the box, far away from us here in the booth. Looks to control, is facing off one-on-one -on -one with David Whipke. Breaks through Whipke's check, but chokes back out. There is a flag thrown. Looks like it may go on a slash for David Whipke as Marcus Willis controls. Uh, we will have to see if Otterbein can take advantage of this delayed penalty call. An awesome pass there is Willis who throws over to Connor Bach who is just leveled by Tommy Adolph and another flag thrown on that play. I think that that one, you know what? That's going to, I believe that's going to go to Bettel. Bettel's going to have to, he's going to have to have a teammate of his serve the penalty as he, got, he took a slash there, deliberate slash, trying to take it away from Giuliano. And a third flag thrown now on the field. Uh, there could be an unsportsmanlike conduct. There's a one minute slash called. There's an unnecessary roughness called. And one minute non-releasable for what may be a conduct. Three uh, JCU players sitting in the box. Wow. Uh, looks like we'll go down to two, one of them serving two minutes. So we have number four, uh, David Whipke in the box for the slash, and number 19, uh, Tommy Adolph in the box for an unnecessary roughness and an unsportsmanlike conduct. Huge opportunity for the Cardinals to make John Carroll, to, you know, to give John Carroll a little bit of a smack in the face and say, hey, take that, you know, really put this game away. Colin Hartnett rallying his players in a little bit just to get him to, you know, 
realize, you know, at what, what point they're at in the game and you know, make sure that, uh, you know, you put, you do what you can to put this game away. You got a two man advantage. You got plenty of time to work that ball around non-release. You got one non-releasable as you mentioned, Matt. So, you know, that's, and I, and I think it's, if you're Otterbein, you got to applaud yourself for the work you've done today. The resiliency that this team showed, you know, down three to two, they didn't let it get away from them. They knew, you know, you know the kind of game lacrosse can be. You know how quickly you can turn it around. And that series of goals near the end of the second half really set the tone for this John Carroll team. So we see Brian Small off to the side with one of the referees being very vocal, um, arguing quite a lot about what's going on. Brian Small not happy at all. Uh, but I don't think arguing with this referee is going to do anything to change the course of this game. He's obviously not going to get those two very obvious calls uh, retracted. So we will come back to Otterbein's possession. Up two players with David Whitkey out for a one-minute slashing and Tommy Adolf out for a one-minute releasable un uh, unnecessary roughness. As, well, as a uh, unsportsmanlike conduct one minute non-releasable but brian small now still mouthing to the ref no. i think if i think if you and that's i was talking about earlier you never you never give the officials enough credit for how much they have to put up with with certain coaches you know it's it's uh it's a it's a rough business if you're them you have to have a thick skin and uh right now you give you give these officials credit today they've had to put up with a lot from brian small brian small a little bit i you know i won't say a little bit very irate almost a little bit out of control colin hartnett other you know colin hartnett just the complete opposite uh and so as the official walks away from small we will see a six on four offensive opportunity for the otterbein cardinals uh pat tyner controls on the far side, throws over and close to Stowe. Stowe goes up to Willis, back down to Stowe, who shoots, goes down over the right leg of Bettle. Bettle just looks so defeated and nothing left to say as he walks away from his net. That will put Otterbein up 15 to seven with 325 left. That will release the slashing on David Whipke, but Tommy Adolph still locked in the box. Play goes back to the center. Salazar will go down against Whipkey. Players head to head. They crouch. The whistle is blown. Whipkey on top of it, can't get underneath it as Salazar, but Chiston White, the player for Otterbein University, breaks in and kicks that ball away. Great pressure there by White. Not quite enough, but good enough to force it back. Uh, so possession will go to JCU, and it is walked up by Kevin Werner. Kevin Werner on the far side. His team still down one man. We'll have to see if they can do anything with it here in the last three minutes of play. Dishes off to Jackson Twomey. Twomey looks to carry across, but is met heavy and hard by White, who puts on the pressure, throws over to Michael Roth. Roth met by defenseman uh, Connor Underwood. Otterbein defense knocks the ball away. Excuse me, that was Lucas Swisgood on the defensive play manages to knock the ball away uh, but there is a pushing foul and possession will stay with the jcu blue streaks so carrying the ball now michael roth for john carroll will look for an outlet pass and finds it at the top of the box from declan o'grady swiss good first year lacrosse player uh as a sophomore out of sunbury ohio and big walnut high school and there was a huge hit there, uh, which will cause a delayed penalty. It looks like we're going to get two. Plenty of calls being made now. The referee is really trying to tighten down. At least one of those calls will go on Trevor Kajowski for a high hit uh, away from the ball. So whether that incidental or intentional, that will still land him in the box. Uh, Brian Spall still very upset because one of his players was called. 
It looks like that's Dakota Thomas. Oh, that's who they call that on. They call that they on call Small. That on Brian Small. So not surprising. Not surprising that he had that one coming, Matt. The officials will give a conduct foul to JCU on their irate coach. Just for a minute there, I thought they might toss him out of the game. I and I've I'm and I'm not surprised. You know that hasn't happened, honestly, Matt. You know I've been to many games and you know not trying to be a little too biased or anything, but that's that's out of control right there. That's you cannot have that happen to a head coach. Assistant coaches, what you what 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 do you do there? You know you you step. That's where you have to step in. And they give you the opposing team's coach, Colin Hartnett. You make him look bad by being the best you can be. And that's what Hartnett has clearly done so far. So we will see Trevor Kajowski go to the box. Uh, a minute for an illegal body check as well as a minute for unnecessary roughness. But uh, Colin Hartnett, or excuse me, Brian Small will cost his team a 30-second conduct foul. And that will really come down hard and heavy on the JCU Blue Streaks. Now with under two minutes to try and do anything left to this Otterbein Cardinal uh, team, and I don't think they're going to have enough to do it. So as the ball is cycled around the uh, Otterbein offensive zone, the John Carroll five-man defense looks to just shut them down. We'll have to see if they can do it. Ball controlled at the top of the box by number 20, Adam Kolovar. Kolovar throws low to Riley Dixon. We're seeing a whole new roster from Otterbein out here now, uh, getting some extra guys, some playing time. Great to see here. A good call by Colin Hartnett. So Kolovar plays with it on the outside of the box, looks for an outlet. Still carrying it is Kolovar. Hitting uh, him hard is Patrick Carney. Check after check, but Kolovar dishes back off to Dixon. There's a huge swing check after the whistle um, done there by uh, Jackson Twomey. But there was a timeout called by Colin Hartnett, and that will bring the teams together uh, for what will probably be one last timeout, 52 Point one seconds remaining in this game as Otterbein is up 15 to seven. Um, you know, so Jacob, what do you think is your overview of this game? Is there, you know, do you have an underlying theme of the way this game has been played today? Um, physical, uh, a little bit. Uh, if I want to describe John Carroll's style and uh, Brian Small, uh, almost a little out of control, a little bit. I think the Otterbein's not a team that you want to take these kinds of mistakes on. You know, Brian Small knew that coming into today, and it, it, I think that they let this one slip away from them. They, their mistakes are ultimately what cost them this game. I think for Otterbein, it's just been, you, you know, you couldn't ask for a better response to what what happened. You know, it's you're responding well, and I think the best way, as you said, yeah, you love to be get back. You love to get back at your opponent by being physical, but it feels even better to just beat them up. Exactly. Otterbein has done a great job, um, you know, playing just right up against this JCU very physical team, and they have not let them get in their heads, and that is great. Uh, this Cardinals team is a big team, um, not only in size of roster, but size of player. Um, average size on the team is right around six foot two. Uh, so they have not been outplayed by this physical John Carroll team and that has really shaken the John Carroll offense as well as the John Carroll defense which we've seen so as we wait now for uh, Tyler Reed the senior midfielder out of Milford Ohio to carry in he loses the ball quickly as he is doubled by JCU defense but the ball still in play is kicked out of bounds we'll have to see which way the refs call possession and they give it to JCU uh, John Carroll will pick it up by number 18 James Blake here with 40 seconds left. Blake tripped up as he tries to carry in. No call on that. Thrown over to Jackson McLean. McLean throws deep to Stephen Luce, who throws over to Brian Jaska. Jaska looks for Luce. Luce takes a shot, goes wide left. Chase won there by Michael Roth. 
Roth picks up with only 17 seconds left. Uh, ball makes its way out to the top of the box with Gary Anile. Anile looks back to Roth. Roth, who looks across to O'Grady. O'Grady, who goes to Flinter, who just can't split the defense. There is a flag on the field, but clock runs out. That flag will be irrelevant. And Otterbein takes this game 15 to 7 over the now 9 and 2 John Carroll University. Yeah, Coach Colin Hartnett, very wise decision, letting the John Carroll players pass before letting his team go down and celebrate. Uh, trying to, you know, direct the players to their respective ends here, their respective huddles. You want to keep these teams separate the way, after, you know, after how physical John Carroll got, how nasty, you know, how how to hand this got at certain points. So, uh, but enough of, you know, you know, we saw enough of the effort by the Cardinals today. You know, great response, you know, being down three to two. And uh, that should wrap it up here for this. Uh, that should wrap it up this afternoon for Matt Cole and the rest of our crew, our director, David Kinder. I'm Jacob Barker. So long from OTV.